a singularity in the plant world. A palm tree that blooms and bears fruit underground. Scientists have described a new species of palm from Borneo, which blooms and bears fruit underground. Despite the fact that the plant is well known to the local population for its eagerly eaten fruit, this species has gone unnoticed by scientists. Until now. Sometimes it's really worth looking under your feet, because you can miss a spectacular scientific discovery. Such was the case with this unusual palm tree. The discovery of this previously unknown species was determined by the desire to take a clearer picture. Thus, a species of palm with an extraordinary ability to flower and bear fruit underground was found. The plant, named Penanga subterranea, is the first known species of the palm family to bear fruit and bloom only underground. Most plants have evolved flowers and fruits above ground to facilitate pollination and seed dispersal. Forcing researchers to wonder how the newly described palm has survived for thousands of years. The description and results of the research were published in the journal Plants, People, Planet. This unusual palm is located in Borneo. On the island alone, there are about 300 different species of palm trees, and over 2,500 species are known to scientists around the world. This particular one can be found in the rainforests on the border of Malaysia and Indonesia, because the land border between these countries runs on the island of Borneo. The plant is well known to the local population, who, moreover, appreciate its sweet and juicy, bright red fruits. But the scientific world remained unaware of its existence for a long time. It seems that the first scientist to notice it was the Malaysian botanist Paul Chai. The researcher came across it when he visited the Lanyak Antimau Reserve in 1997. Several such palms were also observed in 2017 by Indonesian researcher Agusti Randi. The place where he found them looked as if one of the palm trees had been dug up by wild pigs. The rest were partially eaten or trampled by other wild animals. Scientists from various countries, including Malaysia and Indonesia, of course, but also representing the Royal Botanic Gardens. RBG decided to join forces to learn more about this previously unknown species of palm. As Benedict Kuhnhauser from RBG admitted, if not for the information from Paul Chai, the researchers would probably just pass by this plant without paying attention to it. Anyway, he also found it by chance, wanting to take a good picture of a young palm tree. Pushing aside the leaves, he noticed the fruit beneath them. There's a good reason to want to take a closer look at it. Both the fruits and flowers of Penanga subterranea appear mostly hidden underground. 
Therefore, it initiated a new family of palms called Aracaceae. And the second part of its name refers to its unusual specificity and comes from the Latin word for the underground. In the context of the functioning of Penanga Subterranea, one issue is particularly puzzling. Flowering plants bloom above the ground for a reason. In this way, for example, they make it easier for insects to pollinate them. And then it is also easier for her to spread the seeds. Geocarpic plants bloom above the ground, but their fruits appear below the surface. Peanuts are a good example. There are also a number of plants that can bloom and bear fruit underground. This is the case for a total of 171 species. However, species whose flowers and fruits appear only underground are rare. So far, this has only been observed with Rhizanthella, orchids. In the context of Penanga subterranea, a number of questions may arise regarding what pollinates its underground flowers and how it is able to find them. Scientists are at a loss here so far. And it is hoped that the interest of more researchers in this matter will create opportunities to solve this mystery. Microplastic found in the deepest parts of the lungs. Plastic particles have already been found almost everywhere, from the highest mountains to the depths of the ocean. Microplastics are found in cosmetics, food, seawater and drinking water. Last month it was found in human blood, so it should come as no surprise that it has now been found in lungs as well. The term, microplastic, was coined several years ago, and it seems that these particles are almost everywhere. It is estimated that each year the average person consumes about 74,000 plastic particles, and its impact on health is little known. Now it turns out that microplastic has also found its way to the lungs. The research was published in the journal Science of the Total Environment. In March this year, scientists announced that they had found microplastics running through our veins. Now it turns out that its particles are also at a low level deep in our lungs. The most extensive study of its kind has detected dozens of microplastic particles, each at least 3 micrometers in size, in 11 out of 13 lung tissue samples taken during surgical procedures performed on living patients. Previous studies on cadavers and lung cancer samples also revealed tiny fibers and flakes of plastic. However, none of the samples were analyzed for the composition of synthetic polymers. Of the types of microplastic detected in the latest study, polyethylene PE, was the most common. Such plastic is found in bags and packaging, paint, on roads and tires, and in nylon clothes. But in total, 12 types of microplastics from different plastics have been detected, 
which have many uses and are commonly found in packaging, bottles, clothing, ropes, strings and many other products. Significantly higher levels of microplastics were also found in men compared to women. Plastic got into the lungs through breathing. No surprise here. Our data is an important aspect of how much air pollution is caused by microplastics, explains respiratory specialist Laura Sadowski of Hull York Medical School in the UK. The characterization of the types and levels of microplastics we found can now provide data for research to determine health impacts. These microplastic particles were present in small amounts, but they were present throughout the lungs, and the deeper the tissue, the greater the contamination. So deep in the lungs, the plastic particles were surprisingly large. This is surprising because the airways in the lower lungs are smaller. And we would expect particles of this size to be filtered out or retained before they reach so deep into the lungs, explains Laura Sadowski. Beyond that, we know very little. For example, it is not known what, if any, impact small amounts of microplastics in the lungs have on